A single spark and a second later... Occupants were charging their e-bike in the front the room. The entire garage is on a fire. A burnt-out e-scooter. combusting lithium-ion battery. Still attached to the wheel of an e-bike. An increasing number of fires is being linked to lithium-ion batteries. Lithium-ion batteries are one of the fastest-growing fire risks in the country, and recently there's been an increase in media coverage on lithium battery fire events. Here's what happens when a battery vape explodes. Here's another shocking explosion. With millions of vapes and other lithium-ion products being wrongly dumped into general waste every year, the industry is at a flashpoint. There have been five fires recently in Queensland and nearly 40 around the country with a huge blaze at Canberra's only recycling facility on Boxing Day last year also being blamed on overheated crushed single lithium batteries. An e-bike caused this explosion in the Sydney backpackers and in Queensland there have been fatalities. Hey but wait a minute, my Tesla has got lithium ion batteries. So what then is the difference between a lithium-ion battery in your electric drill or your portable vacuum cleaner or your e-bike or your small electric motorbike and the lithium-ion battery in your electric vehicle? A lot of it boils down to the quality of the charging circuitry and what is known in the electric vehicle as the battery management system or BMS. Typically a low-cost lithium-ion battery product will not have any form of battery management system. There are two important aspects which are the key elements that make up an efficient battery management system. Charge balancing and thermal management. Lithium-ion batteries each have an acceptable operating temperature range. A lithium-ion battery operating outside of its safe temperature range will cause performance degradation and irreversible damage to the cells. In extreme cases, it can even cause thermal runaway, excessive overheating of the cell and possible combustion. A battery management system controls the temperature of the battery through heating and cooling. But I know what you're saying. If I go on YouTube, there are just dozens of videos of electric vehicles on fire. So what's going on with their battery management systems? And just how many electric vehicles in Australia have caught fire? And why? Why did they catch fire? Well, I came across a really good explanation recently while listening to the Everything Electric podcast with Robert Llewellyn and his guest Emma Sutcliffe from EV Firesafe. EV Firesafe is a global website based in Australia that Emma runs and shares information with firefighters all over the world about electric vehicle and lithium-ion battery fires. But we've only had six electric vehicle battery fires in Australia ever. This is and at had all six. Ever. Six. Wow. So we've had six. And I mean, there are now tens, if not hundreds of thousands, of electric cars on the roads in Australia. I think we're knocking on lot. about one hundred and fifty to one hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. Right. So we're still. And you've had still, six battery fires. Six battery fires. Now right. none of them were connected to charging. One was right. arson. Three were in buildings and the buildings burnt down around the car. So nothing to do with the car. The building caught fire, but took the cars with them. Oh, right. So they, the, the cars didn't start the fire in the building. No. Cars were just wow. involved in the building fire. Yeah. Then we've had one high-speed collision. That was at about 160 k's through a, a sign into a tree. And then we had one um, that hit road debris. So it hit uh, right. the a, a, a tail shaft of a truck. So it's an 18 kilo chunk of steel. Right. Uh, and it ran over the top of it at 100 k's an hour. Actually, at 111.58 yeah. kilometers per hour, we've got the data <laughs> from Tesla. Um, <laughs> so, and none of them were connected to charging. They were all in normal operation. So right. there's been six. And we've had a few others that have been a bit weird. There was one at Sydney Airport, but that was that was weird. The pack had been dropped out and left on the ground for, for months on end and you know, that went into right. the film runaway. But but in normal operation, six in yeah. Australia. And it yeah. is the way that, I mean, it has become a sort of uh, traditional media and sort of radical online. Uh, you know, it's, it's, not, I don't, it's not a meme, but it's a, an obsession. That, that, so mm -hmm. we've had the, the two big fires we had here that got in the news. Yeah. One was on a car transporter in the North Sea near, uh, near the Netherlands, and the yeah. other was in a car park at Luton Airport. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm not going to let them off the hook. The BBC first announced the Luton Airport fire, they said, was probably started by an electric vehicle. 
yeah. it, there were no electric vehicles in that car park. The yeah. next door car yeah. park has chargers where all the electric cars were. It was a diesel Range Rover that caught yes. fire. Not even yeah. a hybrid. <laughs> for, for reference, um, so Fremantle Highway, Felicity Ace, Sincerity Ace, they were all carrying, they're all car-carrying car cargo ships. Yeah that caught fire in, um, in the Felicity Ace example sank. And all of them have had this talk around their electric vehicles and, and, yeah. and we're still waiting to hear on Fremantle Highway. But as of now, there's only been one electric vehicle fire on that caused a fire on a ship. That right. was in 2010. It was actually the very first incident on our database. And it right. was a wow. home converted vehicle with a homemade charging cable on a passenger ferry. And, right. um, you know, it was, to be honest, back then, probably not a case of if but when. And, yes. uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> it was on a ship and um, uh, fireys had to be helicoptered in. Everyone was okay and it was, right. it was controlled quite quickly. But that's the only verified electric vehicle battery fire uh, on a ship. On a, on a ship. So, wow. Isn't that, and that yes. was in 2010. Right. So it's a really important point that, just because an electric vehicle's on fire doesn't mean we've got a battery fire. Yeah. And the other important point that we're now just starting to see very recently is if you've got 10 electric vehicles and you've got one battery fire, the question in our heads was always, do we then get 10 battery fires? But I think the answer that's emerging is, no, we have one battery fire and nine car fires. Right. It's actually quite hard to get the battery to go into thermal runaway, which is the right. scientific. So that. just quickly, just so I really understand, it's possible, say, mm. there's, there's been an elect or accident or electrical fault, the yeah. electric car has caught fire, you mm. attend, and you don't have to deal with putting out the battery. Basically, you have to deal with putting out the car fire, which would be very similar to a petrol or diesel car. Um, Correct. Am I right? Correct. Absolutely. Right. The, the, the difference in that scenario will be that because the car has been on fire, there's been that heat and that thermal impact yeah. to the battery, even if the battery is not involved, we just need to be aware of moving it and the risk of secondary or, or an yeah. ignition in the battery. <coughs> so it yeah. could potentially happen later on. It's very low risk. Yeah. But uh, two, in the last, say, month, two fires on motorways, it's just a car on the side of the road on fire. And we yeah. know we know the cars well enough, and none of them were electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they were, you know. But it's still really shocking when you see it, and all the traffic going there, and then you hear the fire engine coming, and the, and there's people, thankfully, in all the cases, standing well away. And there's this vehicle, this vehicle with huge billowing flames and smoke coming out of it. But yeah. one of the things I want to know is when that happens, and that did happen to uh, friends of ours a long time ago in a Renault. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, which just caught fire when they were driving somewhere. There was smoke coming out of it, and he got the kids out, and they stood and they yeah. watched it and went. Pfft. But what happens when that with, with fuel tanks? Because everyone talks about oh, yeah. batteries. Are, a fuel tank's a really dangerous thing. I, you know, yeah. I've seen a lot of fuel explode. It's really big. Uh, car fires are for, for us as a for my brigade in Little River. Uh, car, car fires are bread and butter. You know, we do those all the right. time. Yeah. <laughs> typically at three o'clock in the morning with some dust right. in the car on a back road kind of thing you know yeah, yeah yeah they're really really common really common. wow so as electric vehicle numbers grow you might think that fires will also increase global data however shows that there are now 40 million electric vehicles on the roads internal combustion engine vehicles are proving to be 20 times more likely to catch fire Let's not minimise the risk, though, from lithium batteries in e-bikes, skateboards and small appliances. To avoid disaster, don't buy cheap products. Don't modify those products and be sure to unplug them when they're fully charged. Hey, thanks for watching. G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now and let's drive.